So a lot's happened uh, over the past couple of days that have made me feel like I need to speak on this really quickly for the sake of my vanity. If my skin looks really red and patchy and like kind of odd, like there's a reason why I got my big glasses on today. Don't worry about it. I just got microneedling done and you're not allowed to wear makeup for like three days afterwards. I'm like, use moisturizer. We had the Met Gala on Monday and I filmed a live reaction to that, just watching the red carpet. The conversation in the moment has to do with uh, Kim Kardashian wearing uh, Marilyn Monroe's happy birthday dress from 1962. And there is a lot of drama around that, specifically within my community, which is the fashion history, dress history, as well as the historical costuming community. I want to dig into why Kim Kardashian wearing Marilyn Monroe's happy birthday dress was incredibly problematic, incredibly unethical, and incredibly bad, but also why it wasn't Kim's fault. Got you there, didn't I? My name is Abby Cox. I have been a dress historian, which is an, an academic way to say fashion historian, basically for almost 15 years now. I don't, I've lost track of time. I have a master's degree in decorative arts and design history. I've worked at museums studying historical clothing. I obviously have this YouTube channel where we talk about historic dress. I believe in the importance of conserving our clothing because our clothing is what connects us to the past. It is one of the few things that we can all relate to as people. When you look at a painting of someone from 200 years ago, you go, wow, that's a really great painting. But when you actually can see the clothing in person, it you can see their sweat stains, you can see their unique body forms. It makes history so much more human and so much more relatable and so much more real. And that's what I talk about here. I really like kind of breaking down the snobby academia side of things and making dress history and clothing history and fashion history as relatable as possible. I am not a conservator by trade. My research assistant and script editor, Kenna, who helped me immensely on this video, she does have training in textile uh, conservation. So her influence on this video has been insurmountable. She's incredible and I adore her, she's awesome. I also have a bunch of links that I use for reference, links about textile conservation, the rules, the ethics. So if you wanna read more, feel free. Also just another disclaimer, there is information coming out about this dress every day. Obviously you guys saw, I am filming this on Thursday. The Met Gala was on Monday. There could absolutely be more information that comes to light well after this video has been filmed and released. Ken and I did our due diligence to get as much information about this from the best sources as possible to the best of our ability. The so links will be down in the description below if you want to read. Part one, why was this bad and unethical? Just to start. Clothing is extremely fragile. Once we started using chemical dyes and more mechanical processes to create the textiles, to create the clothing, the ruins of textile more quickly. It is very, very hard to conserve. It's very hard to maintain. It's very hard to keep, and it's very hard to display. When I'm saying costumes, I mean clothing in this instance, just also so we're clear. When we're putting clothing on display or textiles on display, curators are actively understanding that by the act of putting the garment on display, it is actively harming the garment. It's the balance of is the educational and opportunity for the public to see this garment worth the damage that the garment's going to experience. Now, about Marilyn Monroe's happy birthday dress in particular, that dress sold at auction several years ago for $5 million, okay? And that makes it the most expensive dress of all time. It is now valued at around $10 million. Additionally, not only for its high monetary value, there is nothing else like it. The replica, that doesn't count. This is it. It is the one dress. In addition to that being the only one, extremely expensive, it is also of significant American history as well as general Western pop culture significance. This dress is important. It is a signifier of a certain period in our political world, in our social world, and in our pop culture world within the United States itself. Honestly, it should not be at Ripley's. It should be at the Smithsonian. And the reason that Ripley's was able to purchase it is because Ripley's was able to afford that $5 million price tag. This kind of goes into a lot of issues that we have with funding. The Costume Institute is one of the if not the only department at the Met that has to come up with its own funding. That is why the Met Gala started so many years ago. They don't have outside funding. They don't have funding from the museum itself. They have to earn their own money to maintain their own collection. So this also just kind of harkens back to how clothing 
collection and clothing acquisition and clothing and antique clothing departments and costume and textile departments are not treated equally. And there's there's misogyny in there too, guys, just, just so we're clear, because obviously clothing is women's work and it's not considered fine art. But as you know, on this channel, we do not, we do not adhere to that. All of that right there is reason alone why this dress should never have been worn by Kim Kardashian. It should never have been worn by anybody. It should be carefully preserved honestly not put on display very often and carefully conserved and maintained because it's going to disintegrate at some point. Morgan was telling me about this because she's been doing a lot of research on this dress. It's made out of a type of silk chiffon that's not produced anymore because it's extremely flammable. Awesome. Furthermore, the International Committee of Museums and the American Alliance of Museums have written actual ethics out. Garments that are in collections, that are in archives are not full stop, not to be worn. So this was in direct violation of multiple museums codes of ethics. And this kind of goes to show how Ripley's is basically full. And that is because Ripley's is not actually a real museum. They are not an accredited museum and they are not adhering to museum ethics. And frankly, if Ripley's wanted to become like accredited, they wouldn't be able to get it at this point because they actively went against museum, multiple museum committees form of ethics. And this is international. This is not just the United States. Like this was decided on in the 1980s and it has been full stop. Those are the rules if you want to be considered a legit museum. While Ripley's is a for-profit tourist trap, that's what it is. They were using a lot of flowery language to pretend and imply that they're more legit than what they actually are. Using words like, we're the stewards of this dress and the utmost care was taken in the conservation and presentation of this dress. That, that's all a bunch of bull just, just so we're clear. If they were an actual legit museum, it, it wouldn't see the light of day. Kim's request would have been sent to the spam folder. It, this dress would never have been worn. It would be kept in a climate controlled environment in its own container, not even an archival box, but its own like steel container with pest control, lighting control, humidity control, temperature control. It would not be handled hardly at all. Just being able to be able to go in and see the dress, like to study it would have been a huge ordeal for most museums because it is so fragile and it's so delicate and it's so important. Kim wearing this dress has actively destroyed the dress. When you wear a garment, you're destroying it. Literally the, the shirt I'm wearing right now, I am actively destroying it because my body has oils. Body oils will destroy clothing. I'm wearing deodorant, just moving around, Subi jumping up in my lap, me holding a cup of coffee, spilling coffee on it, getting stains, moving in the garment because every time you move in something, something's having to give. So when we look at Kim walking the red carpet, one, we already know the dress doesn't fit her and you can see the struggle for her to literally move down the red carpet. Now, I wanna be very clear here. I am not judging Kim Kardashian's body. This is not a hot take on her body. I do not want body shaming comments below. This is just dressmaking fact. It didn't fit her, period, full stop. It doesn't matter. She could barely move. You could see stress wrinkles across her hips because her hips are much larger than, than Marilyn Monroe's. And every move she made damaged the dress. The hem is probably damaged even more because she kept stepping on the hem. That was also very obvious walking down the red carpet. Also, the red carpet is extremely brightly lit. Even if she changed at the Met itself, just her wearing the dress from that room to the top of the stairs to get changed again has done insurmountable damage on that dress. This, this sounds kind of weird, guys, and I understand that. Marilyn was the only person who wore that dress, and she basically wore it naked underneath. That dress is been impregnated with, with Marilyn's essence, essentially. Her body oils, her skin, her, her DNA, quite literally. And I know this sounds like super gross, but that's actually one of the really cool things about looking at historic garments because you see the human who wore them in a very different, much more intimate capacity. And literally Kim wearing this dress, she has imposed her body on top of Marilyn's. So this brings up another kind of more philosophical question here is who's of more importance? We consider that Marilyn Monroe's dress. Marilyn Monroe is an icon. By Ripley's think, saying that they added to its cultural significance with Kim Kardashian, they are actively downplaying Marilyn Monroe's significance and implying that Kim Kardashian is of the same level of cultural significance as Marilyn Monroe. I'm not gonna really weigh in on this. Um, you all are welcome to weigh in this in the comments below. Again, no body shaming them. So the other issue with how this garment's been handled is um, actually the use of cotton gloves. With 
textile conservation and curatorial like ship, there are a couple of chains of thought, but the old school way of viewing things was to wear cotton gloves when handling garments. However, recent developments and recent research and recent experiences have decided that that's actually not good for clothing, especially. This is because cotton will snag on beads, on sequins, on embroidery, on textiles, on buttons. And so them just wearing cotton gloves alone with that dress and then manhandling it, sliding it up, they are actively causing damage to the dress. You don't have the, the tactile feeling that you do with like bare hands. So you could actually pull harder on a garment because you can't feel it. If they were going to do this at all, she needed to be wearing nitrile gloves because that allows you to have the actual mobile and tactile dexterity. It's more protective. It's not gonna catch on things in the same way as cotton gloves. Now, there are gonna be some counter arguments to this. Um, I've seen some pop up on social media, but I wanna address them just kind of head on. One of the things that I've seen people be like, uh, why is it that it's okay for this person to wear an antique garment, but it's not okay for Kim to wear Marilyn's dress? Other than I think the f fairly obvious, this dress is one of a kind, it's historically significant, it's extremely delicate, it's a part of American history, therefore should not be worn. Also, it's a, the most expensive dress of all time. Doesn't actually cover it enough. It's in an archive collection. It goes against actual museum ethics. Privately owned property, whether you like it or not, there's really nothing you can say about it. You know, if I wanted to wear one of my garments in my personal collection, there's nothing anyone can do about it except just shame me on the internet. It's my personal property, therefore I can do with it as I see fit, just like I should be able to do what I want with my body because it's my body and do with it as I see fit. Thank you. Historic garments, and there were other historic garments worn actually on the red carpet. Laura Harrier was reported to be wearing a quote unquote gilded age petticoat. Barring like what, it, we don't really know what it looks like, but if she was just wearing like a plain white cotton petticoat, honest, honestly guys, there's so many of them. There's tons of them. They're not actually that historically significant. You know, they are essentially the white t-shirt of today. And so it's not as big of a deal. You know, we were seeing original antique garments on display. So what makes those okay, but Kim's different? Again, how many exist? Wearing a dress from 1962, when you say it that way, it's not a big deal. I wear dresses from the 1960s. I've worn dresses from the 1940s and 50s, but I haven't worn a one-off dress of historical significance. And that's the difference. What we deem acceptable within the vintage wearing and antique clothing wearing communities, it's a sliding scale. And Marilyn Monroe's dress is on the end of the scale that says, do not wear it. Celebrity culture, ultra rich culture, believe that they're entitled to wear these antique garments, that they're entitled to wear garments of historical significance. By Kim wearing this dress, it sets that precedent. And it's awful and it's uncalled for. However, I will also say it's very much on theme for the Gilded Age because guess who also was super entitled to think that they could wear stuff of historical significance without any repercussions. The wealthy aristocracy of the Gilded Age. This one's going to be controversial for you guys because uh, you guys aren't going to probably like what I have to say. Is Kim Kardashian at fault for this? Ultimately, no. Why? She doesn't know. She is nothing more than basically a mannequin for this dress. You know, she's not a part of the dress history world. She's not a part of the mu museum like world. She's not a she's not a conservator. She's not a collector. She's not a curator. She is a celebrity and she had a damn good idea and it worked out for her. What she is at fault for is causing a great deal of trauma and triggering the shit out of people who have eating disorders, disordered eating issues, body dysmorphia, and just general body issues for young people and just adults everywhere. The fact that she owns up to doing essentially what I think is a keto diet and losing six, 16 pounds in, in three weeks is not only bad for the keto community as a whole, but it's bad for everyone. That's what she should be ashamed of. The people who are actually to blame in the situation are the upper heads of Ripley's. So I'm talking the CEO, I'm talking presidents, vice presidents, department heads, even people like that, PR heads. We are not going to blame conservators who had this message passed down because this, this trail of chaos started with an email that got sent to the PR head, that got sent to the CEO, that got sent to the president, and then it trickles back down. Curators and conservators are told what to do. They don't actually really have a say in the situation, usually. I will say that this is a brilliant marketing ploy, like from a business perspective, both on Kim's part as well as Ripley's part, because this got people talking about the dress. They're now putting it on display with Kim memorabilia. This was all a ploy to get people to talk about the dress to then come and visit the dress to just bring in more money. Vogue is also to blame here. They 
organize the private dressing room. Is the Met to blame in this? That depends. Again, we're not gonna blame curators and we're not gonna blame conservators on this, but was the Met complacent? Mmm, probably. You know, again, this is going back up to, to higher ups, uh, people in positions of power um, who usually are cis white men who don't respect uh, clothing, who don't respect these departments. Again, I wanna remind you that the Costume Institute is the only department within the Met that has to secure its own funding. Woo, guys, Instagram was lit <laughs> the following day. I assume Twitter was also on fire. Um, even like decrepit Facebook was pretty happening. The LA Times released an article. The headline is from the LA Times, conservators speechless that Kim Kardashian wore Marilyn Monroe's dress to the Met Gala. Textile conservators and fashion curators are appalled that beauty mogul Kim Kardashian donned Marilyn Monroe's iconic Jean-Louis gown for the 2022 Met Gala. Quote from Sarah Sakut. Uh, Turo. I'm so sorry, Sarah. I am frustrated because it sets back what is considered professional treatment for historic costume. So my worry is that colleagues in historic costume collections are now going to be pressured by important people to let them wear garments. Kenna reached out to Summer Lee, their, their colleagues and friends, and Summer Lee has done videos about Kim wearing Marilyn's dress and, and raising some questions with it. Here's what she had to say on it. I am just in disbelief that this even happened because rule number one of any museum object is to handle it as as little as possible and certainly never wear them. I was very glad to learn that Kardashian only wore the authentic dress for just a few minutes, just for the red carpet. And then she changed into a replica dress for the rest of the night to like eat in. But then learning that there was a replica dress really makes me question why the original ever had to be jeopardized in the first place. Because like, what if it was damaged in transportation or just in those few minutes that it was worn? And even in Kenneth's like, group chat with the textile conservator uh, people, uh, someone actually commented, I think it's interesting that she was opening herself up to critique of quote unquote, gilding herself in a very valuable historic garment. I think this kind of brings up the larger issue of just the theme itself and how a lot of people really don't understand the theme in that the Gilded Age is not actually golden. It is gilded over, <laughs> gilded is cheap. Gilded is gold leaf over cheap wood. This is when we were fighting for unions, labor rights, fair wages, children, child labor, immigrant labor, you know, workers' rights. All of this was happening during the Gilded Age. Doesn't that sound familiar? So Kim wearing this dress, feeling entitled to wear this dress is actually extremely on theme. The plus side to this is that dress history, textile conservation, museum collecting, museum collections of antique garments and textiles, it's all being discussed in the broader media and in the general kind of population, people are actively discussing it. The irony that it happened with the leaking of the draft of Roe v. Wade, that irony is not lost on me. That hurts in a way that I can't actually put into words right now. Um, but try and look at the positive side. You know, it is bringing validation to historic dress collecting. It is bringing validation to costume collections. It is bringing validation to textile conservators and conservation. And it's bringing validity to our field of study because we have fought, dress historians have fought for decades, for generations, most of us being women, to be taken seriously, to have our field of study be understood as academically valid and worthy of study. The fact that we're having this light shined so brightly on the importance of dress and the importance of clothing when it comes to the understanding of our history, our cultural history, our nation's history, other nations' history, women's history, men's history, like just societal history is so validating. It's frustrating as all hell that it had to happen in this horrific situation, but it is validating for the work that we do. But I think probably the first thing that we can work on, guys, is maybe the Costume Institute should not have to do its own funding. So they don't have to have these galas to then have people desecrate antique garments that are of historical significance. With that, that is my slightly ranty, semi off the cuff, it's 8.44 in the morning. 
video on this. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, guys. That does help the algorithm both for me and as for you. If you are new here and you have not subscribed, please subscribe. If you are not new here and you have not subscribed, what are you doing? That kind of hurts my feelings, not gonna lie. Go ahead and subscribe. With that, I usually post every other Sunday, but this was an impromptu video, so there'll be another video next week if you're here watching that in real time. With that, let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. Uh, I'm opening the comments up for debate. The one thing I will say, no body shaming, guys. No slut shaming, no body shaming, okay? We're not talking about Kim as a person here. That is not, mm -mm, don't do it. You can be mad at her though for the 16 pound thing. That all right, with that, I'll see you guys here next time.